coin collectors, it's the 1968 Lincoln penny from the United States of America, the Lincoln one cent coin. We see that we have all three mints here. We have the San Francisco mint. We have the San Francisco mint on our left. In the center, we have the Philadelphia mint. In the center, we have the Philadelphia. We have the San Francisco mint on our left. In the center, we have Philadelphia, which does not put a mint mark on their pennies. And over on the side, we have Denver, which has the D1968. At the Denver Mint, they made 2.9 billion. At the Philadelphia Mint, they made 1.7 billion. And at the San Francisco Mint, they made 258 million circulating pennies in another 3 million proof coins. Yes, that's right, 1968. They did make a proof set, and it was from the San Francisco Mint, in fact. The 1968 proof set from the San Francisco Mint. In fact, the 1968 proof set from the San Francisco Mint has one of the more expensive coins from 1968. They have found 43 proof 69 deep cameos so far from the San Francisco Mint from the proof sets, and those are worth $16,150 each. This, however, is a regular circulating one. 9681968 was one of the years they made the circulating coins at the San Francisco Mint. They made them until 1975 with the circulating S Mint on the Lincoln Penny. You see, it says In God We Trust at the top. And these coins are famous for the in God we trust becoming part of the rim. And you can see that here where almost every letter is kind of melded with the rim as we go around. And there actually looks like there's a little bit of a space between the yes and the T. And that's just a little blemish probably came after in postman damage. And so it adds no value to it at all. If we tip it up on its edge, we see that this is still the old copper coin, 95% copper, 5% zinc. These weighed 3.11 G. If we get it onto the back, we see it's the United States of America around the top E Pluribus Unum here. And we look at the E Pluribus Unum, we see a dot between the E and the Pluribus and a dot on each side of the Unum. This is a Lincoln Memorial that we're looking at here in Washington, D.C. And there's Lincoln way down on the inside. And at the bottom, it says one cent. Over here on the right, there are two initials, which are hard to see on this coin. And F and AG will show you those on one of the other coins at the San Francisco Mint. For circulating coins, out of the 258 million they made in 1968, they found one so far at a men's state 68, and that's worth state 67. Plus, those are worth $2,900. The third mint they made these at 1968 is the Denver Mint, and you can see again this in God, we trust becoming part of the coin, and actually you can see the Liberty over here becoming part of the outside of the coin. Also, when you make $2.9 billion like they did at the Denver Mint, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of quality. They have, however, found one Men's State 67 plus it to Denver Mint that's worth $3,000. If we look at the back of this one, we can see Lincoln much better way down there in the center of the Lincoln Memorial, and we can see the initials here were FG on the side. We look way down. Underneath, we can see the V, the D, and the B4 Victor David Brenner, the original engraver of these coins at to Denver, meant they also have found three replenishment mark varieties. And what will happen is you'll get this D here, and it'll look like it's doubled on the inside. I'll show you some other DS that are pretty similar to that one. This one here, this is a little closer to it. It'll kind of have an edge dragging behind it and then have another edge in the center of the D. But when you get the mold like this, it's very hard to tell if it's a replenishment mark or not once they get worn down. If you get it on a, a good coin, you'll easily be able to tell that there's a double D on there for the replenishment mark. Those are worth $50 to $70 if you can find one of those. And then they have three different varieties of the double die in reverse, where they have the doubling of the letters on the back of this coin, and those are worth two to $300 each. So you always look for doubling on here, and some of them I believe that even have doubling on the F and the G. This coin in 1968 was a little different than the years prior because in 1965, the United States Mint decided not to put any mint marks on any coins. So for 1965, 1966, and 1967, no mint marks on any pennies and no mint marks on any other coins either. So in 1968, when they came back from the mint marks, of course, the collectors flocked to these coins. Now, they didn't have a mint mark on the Philadelphia coin, so they didn't bring it back. They, they did have a mint mark on the Denver coin in the San Francisco coin. And so those mint marks came back in 1968. One of the reasons that they brought the mint marks back was they were able to make 4.6 billion of these pennies. 
and so by 1968, they didn't care if people kept or hoarded a lot of them. They had plenty of them out there for people to use. All right, that's all we have today from Coins of Rosie. We'd love to have you subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you have in the comment section. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I'll show you six rare and valuable quarters you should not spend. So without further ado, let's get started. Subscribe six. This is 1934 Washington quarter with double die obverse graded in mint state 66 by PCGs. Bold cartwheels of luster accentuate the brilliant silver surfaces. A satiny and beautiful gem example of this desirable double die error that is easily seen in the letters of the motto. Unlike other varieties of this description, this one requires no imagination at all to see the broad doubling of the letters. A few tiny marks are noted on the reverse under magnification but are of little consequence. It was sold for $6,462.50 number 5. This is 1961 Washington Quarter in Miss 67 plus condition. Pristine looking frosty surfaces are dressed in mottled copper rose sea green, pale pink and powder blue iridescence. According to Stax Bowers, superb gems for the mint state 1961 quarter are surprisingly scarce relative to the sizable mintage 37 million A 1999 P Connecticut state quarter graded in mint state 63 by NGC, an awesome mint error coin recently sold at Stax Bowers, this recipe toning on reverse as a result of mint error. The copper nickel clad layer is absent on the reverse. A missing clad layer error on a coin occurs during the minting process when one of the layers of the coin's composition is not properly bonded or fails to adhere to the other layers. In the case of clad coins such as the state quarters minted from 1999 onwards, the coins typically have a core made of copper with outer layers composed of a combination of nickel and copper, giving them a distinctive appearance. This error coin ended up selling for $336. Number Today I would like to show you this error with Penny from Coin as Collection. 1956. Lincoln Cent was meat Mark DD standing for Denver meat. The content of a coin is 95% copper, 5% tin and zinc. Weight is 3.11 G on overs the right profile of Abraham Lincoln Liberty to the right. Mottingad we trust a bow date to the left and below the date meat mark on the reverse. Two wheat ears surrounding the face value and lettering. United States of America, the pluribus unum abau. This penny is at very fine condition. It bears the mid-era most common one among era coins of coiners, a colored eye clash or generally known as railroad ream. These light doubling on western reams. We witness dye softness on Lincoln's profile. Strike is not as sharp as you can see. The fields of obverse are almost free from mentionable marks except this slanting markables of liberty. Several dents show up between two four o'clocks where little amount of reflectivity seen on this side of a coin. The back side of a penny shows abraded, unborn surfaces. Mostly rubbed surfaces are witnessed on the wheat, ears, and upper parts of E Pluribus Unum. At the same time, United States of America displays uneven distorted surfaces. According to PCG's, sales record for 1956 D penny was set in 2005. Miss 67 General was sold for $74,175 at Heritage Auctions. Boldly struck with bright scintillating luster and unusually vivid red gold toning on both sides. But most expensive 1956 penny overall is this red Lincoln scent struck by Philadelphia Mean. That means they 67 plus. It displays vibrant fire, orange luster, and bold struck with no trace of carbon or handling I appeal. 1936 proof Lincoln scent with satin finish graded as PR 66 plus red by PCGs and later confirmed by CAC according to legend rare coin auctions an exquisite essentially superb example of the first modern proof Lincoln scent struck in two types in 1936 the first having a satiny lustrous finish as here ranking near the top of the pop there is just a single PR 67 RD graded finer at PCGs as of October 11 2023 Clearly, this beautiful coin is one of the best available. Absolutely original. Totally lustrous, satiny surfaces show off a bold red coloration that is rich and vibrant. The devices are sharply impressed by an exacting blow from the dyes. A delicate rose gold overtone gives this stunning coin a fantastic visual allure. There are no serious flecks or marks of any kind that have any impact on the eye appeal. It was sold for $15,275. 1965 Lincoln Cent coin, which sold for $6,600 in this video, is not advised. 
I'm going to give you all the information you require regarding this 1965 penny that was likely discovered by someone who was unaware of its true value. The problem is that there are a ton of valuable and uncommon coins in circulation. People just don't know where to look. Let's get straight into this video without wasting any more time. Thus, the NGC awarded this 191865 Lincoln cent coin an AU58 grade. It indicates nearly uncirculated one can achieve a maximum score of 70. This indicates that the coin was put into use. Before it was discovered, it passed through several hands and remarked, hey, this coin is really uncommon. How then can you determine whether you own one of these coins? It's crucial to understand that your coin is not necessarily rare just because of its appearance. The coin may occasionally sustain environmental damage that results in a color change. That isn't the case in this instance. In actuality, this coin was struck on a blank 10 cent silver planchette. Now getting a scale is a surefire way to determine if you have a coin like this. Yes, that is correct. To find out how much each coin weighs, you should be able to weigh them. The US Mint has a 10% variability acceptance, so keep that in mind. Rate in relation to the coin's weight. This implies that the weight could differ by 10% from the actual weight. This coin weighs 2.5 G, which is significantly less than what a Lincoln cent coin should normally weigh. Again, this coin sold for $6,600. So Lincoln put in Miss 66 Red in 1914, as described by Heritage Auctions. Despite being the important date in the Lincoln cent series, the 1909 SVDB's conditional rarity is far lower than that of many other dates, especially in the higher red grades. In this way, the 1914D distinguishes out, reiterating its importance as a crucial date. In 1914, the Denver Mint only produced 1.1 million Lincoln cents, and only a small number of excellent examples were retained by collectors of the time. Because of this, it is prohibitively rare in MS65 Red compared to the 1909 SVDB. More refined? This one sold for $81,075. First off, the year is 1910. NPR 68 received a red alert from Lincoln. The coins weren't sandblasted after striking, as NGC claims, unlike the rather than having a natural texture added by the dyes like gold proofs, however. This feature is more noticeable on proofs because of their broader strikes, because the models for the Lincoln scent had rough surfaces to prevent glare, a style and trend among artists at the period. The proof dyes were additionally softly sandblasted to give them the distinctively fine crystalline grain of the proofs. With buyer's premium, this highly sought-after jewel ultimately sold for $165,937.50. This 1915 one-cent coin sold for $420. This one was created by NGC at a details. This is a proof coin. However, there is some serious damage on this coin, and the coin was actually bent at one point in time. So a coin that has a lot of damage on it, whether it's a bend or the coin was whizzed, or there's severe environmental damage on the coin. These grading companies simply won't grade the coin. They will give it a genuine grade or an authentic grade, put it in the holder, and they will say details like this example. If this coin was in better condition and it was not bent, it would have sold for a lot more money than $420. For two. Mercury dime struck on an Ecuadorian five centavos planche graded in mint state 62 full bands by NGC, according to Heritage Auctions. A well-centered wrong planche strike showing some weakness around portions of the rims where the planche failed to fill the dies, but generally sharp throughout the interior with excellent full bands definition. Each side has uniform olive, brass, and golden orange hues with satiny luster. It was sold for $11,400. Here's another coin that came before the wheat cent penny. This is an Indian cent coin. Now this one is also a proof coin to tell. If you have a proof coin, you want to look at the backdrop or the field of the coin. It's going to look very lustrous, almost like a mirror. You'll be able to see your reflection. This person who had this coin at some point in time altered the color of the coin to make it look more appealing. However, NGC spotted this and called it altered color and this coin was able to sell for $516. 1,894S Barber Dime, $1,997,500. One of the rarest U.S. coins in existence, according PCGS coin trackers, the 1,894S Barber Dime has only nine known examples today. 
a proof copy of a coin they didn't end up minting that year, there were originally 24 struck. One sold for $1,997,500 in January of 2016. The dime features Lady Liberty in profile on the front and a wreath on the back with one dime stamped in the center. Although it was a proof coin, a few ended up in circulation, including one that showed up in 1957 at Gimbel's department store in New York City. There's a charming story about this coin that may or may not be true. Legend says that the San Francisco Mint superintendent, knowing the coin would be exceptionally rare, gave three of them to his daughter to keep. On her way home from the Mint on a hot day, she spent one of the three for ice cream. Whether or not the story is based in fact, it is possible there are more examples of this super valuable dime that passed into circulation and have yet to be discovered. As you can see by the variety of dimes collectors covet, there are a number of factors that can help you determine if a coin is rare and valuable. Certain years of dimes are valuable, such as those made during the 1790s and 1800s. Condition has a huge impact on value too, with dimes in mint condition always fetching more at auction than similar but worn examples. Errors can also make a dime worth more. Ultimately, watching for all these factors can help you spot those special coins when you see them. So without further ado, let's begin this numismatic journey and discover the undiscovered treasures of American money. Participate 6. It's 1971 now. The half dollar was minted on a planet with 40% silver, which is an intriguing and uncommon wrong planet blunder. According to Stax Powers, the Denver intended to use that composition for its 1970D half dollar issue, therefore an issue that was made utilizing the Zen New Copper Nickel Clad Alloy was mistakenly struck on a 40% silver plate. It was clear that this plache was left over from earlier years. Coinage was vividly struck and polished, only the faintest hints of toning are visible on either side's otherwise silver-gray surfaces. Extremely uncommon and of tremendous significance to knowledgeable mint error collectors, it sold for $9,900. 20. Buffalo nickel struck on a cent planche graded as Miss 62. Brown by NGC E-Strike is flush to the upper right, obverse lower right reverse on a planche that is too small to accommodate the entire buffalo nickel design. The date runs off the planche, in fact, but it is readily identifiable as 1920, and the midmark area is complete to confirm this error. As a product of the Philadelphia Mint, sharply defined for all features that are present with gently modeled sandy brown and coppery gray patent on frosty surfaces, it was sold for $3,360, four double struck 1973 S. Kennedy half dollar, visually stunning and exceedingly rare era coin. According to Stax Bowers, this enchanting piece was struck once properly in collar. It then failed to fully eject from the press and received a second impression. 30% off-center at 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock and rotated approximately 45 degree counterclockwise in relation to the first strike edge. Reading is also associated with this second strike. The second impression received equal force on both sides of the coin and it has completely effaced those areas of the first strike which it overlays. It was sold for $5,520 on the 1988 Washington Quarter with Meat Mark PP standing for Philadelphia Mint, which struck 562 million quarters that year. The question of the day from the viewer below will be answered after examination of this quarter. It's likely at about uncirculated AU50 condition bearing small flame flow. This dashy color doubling strike is not as sharp as you can see where his slight dye softness is evident on hair and ponytail of the president. Fields are almost clean from spotting and contact marks. Most noteworthy marks are these bag mark above the P and small much near the letter L coin exhibits average level of reflectivity. Age is readed. Most of the reads kept well. When we turn it over, we see slight trace of dye deterioration on the beak of the eagle. It's more bulgy, making it look like more of a vulture rather than eagle. At the same time, dye softness is visible on the feasors of the wings. Some elements of upper letterings, for instance, letter A and an E pluribus onum softly struck as well. As I mentioned before, amount of quarters struck by Philadelphia means that year was massive. They only get elusive and valuable starting from mean stage 6 to 6. At mean stage 6 to 7, they sell for $400 to $800. Highest amount for peak quarter was recorded in 2021 on eBay. This splendid quarter with champagne toning was sold for $750. When it comes to 1988D, this is one of the most expensive ones ever sold at auctions. 
at mid-stage 68, a sharply struck immaculate on luster, superb gym, pastel butter, gold toning denies full brilliance. A prize for competitive registry holding sold on January 5th, 2017 for $16,145 at Heritage Auctions. 1958 Jefferson Nickel. Chances are good you may have a Jefferson Nickel in your pocket right now. These five cent pieces have been an important part of US coinage for decades. The US Mint began producing the Jefferson Nickel in 1938 when it replaced the Buffalo Nickel. While most people would likely think that a nickel is not collectible, some Jefferson Nickels can be quite valuable depending on year, type, and condition. For a serious coin collector to jump through the necessary hoops to obtain a Jefferson Nickel, the coin will likely have to be in almost perfect condition. These coins are more beautiful than distressed coins and can be far more valuable. Grading the 1958 Jefferson Nickel. When looking at coins that have been around for decades, you have to take a close look at the coin's condition. While some of these coins may be valuable even if in poor condition, collectors typically only desire coins that are in pristine condition. Finding coins that have stood the test of time and look great can be quite difficult, however. When you are looking at a coin's condition, what you are really in effect doing is trying to decide how that coin might be graded. You can see the guidelines below to get a good estimate of what a Jefferson nickel might be worth based on its condition and grade. Uncirculated. Collectors most often try to get their hands on coins in this condition. These coins have never been circulated or used for exchange, and because of this, their mint state condition may have been well preserved over the years. Looking at the coin's physical appearance, you will likely assume that the coin was freshly minted and has not been around for decades. Extremely fine. Coins assigned this grade will have some very minor flaws. Nevertheless, they may still be sought after by collectors. With this grade, any flaws on the coin are very insignificant and may only be noticed during a very close inspection. Fine. Coins that are assigned this grade have been used in exchange over the years and will have some visible signs of age and wear. That being said, any damage to the coin does not affect the integrity of the coin's images or details. Good. The majority of Jefferson nickels on the market today would fall into this category. These coins have seen heavy use over many years. They may have significant scratches, dents, or even discoloration. For a coin collector, these coins are considered the bottom of the barrel and will often be passed on in favor of coins in better condition. Pricing the 1958 Jefferson nickel. When trying to determine an accurate price range for a coin, there are two key considerations. The first is the coin type. For example, in 1958, there were two types of Jefferson nickel minted. In addition to the coin type, you must also get an accurate assessment on the coin's physical condition. Use the chart below to get an idea of what you might expect to shell out for a 1958 Jefferson nickel based on the coin type and condition. So before the wheat penny, the United States had what we call a flying eagle ascent coin. This one is from 1857. It's a genuine coin. However, this coin was previously in much worse condition, but then someone whizzed the coin. That's why you see NGC designated this as a AU details whizzed coin. So whizzing occurs when someone gets a high powered tool and increases the luster and shine of the coin. These companies like NGC and PCGs can quite easily distinguish a coin that has been altered like this. Overall, it will decrease the value. So don't clean or whiz your coins because this one sold for 288 bucks. Get ready to uncover the hidden treasure of the 1943 quarter value. At a minimum, it's a whopping $3.82. But hold on tight because we're about to take this adventure to the next level. If your quarter is from the Denver or San Francisco mint and in uncirculated condition, we're talking about a value of $1.30 to $1.32. And guess what? The Denver Mint steals the show, being the most valuable of them all. Now, the San Francisco coins may be a little less rare, but don't count them out just yet. And hey, if you happen to stumble upon a Philadelphia Mint quarter without a mint mark, no worries. With over 100 million of those in circulation, they still hold their silver bullion value unless they're in uncirculated condition. So keep your eyes peeled because the treasure hunt for your 1943 quarter value is on. Condition is very important to collectors and dealers when price is considered. The impressive Washington quarter pictured is an example rising to the top of the value scale. Never circulated and nowhere, a very desirable coin.
identifying mint marks, and especially conditioned accurately, combines to reveal how much your 1943 quarter is worth today. The coin value chart breaks the prices down by date, mint mark, and state of preservation. The Asian Howard Dollar Serial Number 5 in Mint State 67. The PCGS holder has a green sticker that is included with CCR pools. The 1974 Eisenhower dollar has one of the highest mintages in the series, and Heimer Nandus claims that it is fairly frequent in circulated grades. For the issue, the mint produced over 27 million coins in low, uncirculated grades. Although it is fairly prevalent, one of the trickier problems of the Type 1 circulation struck Eisenhower dollars is in MS-65 and higher grades. It is particularly rarer in MS-66, and only the coins minted in 972 and 1971p are more difficult to locate. Z's rare MS-67 specimen sold for $11,925 plus buyer's fee. Let's look at this coin first, which appears to have been completely destroyed. They are being sold for $1,000 online. Even though it appears to have been destroyed after the manufacturing, bear in mind that you won't be able to reproduce this error with a hammer, so refrain from attempting to do anything similar. This coin is an actual mint mistake. This is being described as a massive BS double indention on the coin's backside. Basically, you should know that if you come across a coin similar to this, it's worthwhile submitting it to a company like PCGS or NGC to get it validated, graded, and certified so you can sell it online for a lot of money, just as this individual is doing for $1,000. A coin that sold for $1,980 is shown here. This is a one-cent coin from 1999 that was unintentionally struck on die A10 and submitted to the plant. When we say plant it, we essentially mean the piece of metal that the coin is struck on. There are a few ways to determine whether you possess one of these coins. One, if you measure it, it won't be the right size. It will be incorrect to apply the weight. And third, it's evident that the hue will be off. If you possess one of these coins, be sure to have it examined and authenticated because it's worth $1980. Here is a coin that costs more than $138,000. Now, immediately, there are a couple ways we advise getting your rare coin assessed if you have one. You can send a picture of the coin or piece of paper money to us in our community, and we will assess it for you. To find out more about that, click the following link, but you are in no way required to do it. The second choice is to invest the time in independent investigation and discovering at bring those coins to at least three different coin specialists nearby to get their opinion on their genuine value. Now remember that they will let you know if your coin is valuable and unusual. Trust and believe them if all three coin stores declare your coin is not uncommon. They are not attempting to defraud and con you. Remember that the majority of coins are not uncommon or valuable. Many people find it difficult to accept this, but just because you see a rare coin in our movie doesn't mean you actually own that coin. What makes this coin worth $138,000 then? The reason behind this is that when you flip a coin, shows that a Roosevelt dime was inadvertently struck against the back. Reverse. This is unique and impossible to duplicate. If you attempt to fake one, it will be quite obvious. But if you already have one, have it validated, authenticated, and graded so that you can verify its legitimacy online for a significant sum of money, as this guy did for $138,000. Once more, if you wish to understand more about our membership, click the link below. You can cancel at any moment, and it is absolutely cheap. For more information, click the link below. Take care. The 2011 Nikus were produced in large quantities, therefore coins can still be easily obtainable from circulation. According to PCGs, even coin grading up to MS-65 can still be found by searching in grades of MIS-66. There are a bit more scars requiring some effort to find either in circulation or from rolls or bags. In MIS-67, there were scars and possibly most examples in this grade came from original rolls or bags. They are, were rare at mid-stage 68 with a total of seven Denver and Philadelphia variants reported at set condition by PCGS. At mid-stage 68, those with mid-mark D are worth over $1,500. As for PCGS price guide, the Nikos I'm showing you now are from Coiners Collection. Both of them are vibrant with luster and strong cartual effect, but they are at lower mid-stage 60 or 61 most likely. 
The most expensive specimen was sold in 2016-2011 D. Jefferson Nickel. That means they 60 with full steps designation. PCG's certified super jam, full steps. Examples of the 2011 D. Nicky are seldom seen. These Miss 68 full steps coin is a finance at service. The strug is tech sharp and the brilliant surfaces are virtually perfect and radiantly lustrous. An essential acquisition for registry. Said enthusiast sold on January 7th, 2016 for $64,162.50 at Heritage Auctions. We're discussing some seriously damaged coins in this video. This coin, which sold for $21,600, is an example of what you should be looking for on your coin, and I'll show you exactly why it sold for that amount of money at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about this 1909 cent coin that brought $1.99. Now, when you're looking at the coin, you can see there's a lot of damage on the coin, and that's why the label here by PCGS says Environmental Damage UNK Details, and this is also a DO, which stands for Double Die Obverse. So to break this coin down really quick, 1909 was the first year the United States started producing the wheat cent penny coin. There are four different types of this coin. You have the 1909 and the 1909 VDB, which is what you have here. Then you have the 1909S and then the 1909S VDB. The 1909S VDB is typically the most rare and sought after coin out of all of those. However, any 1909 coin, especially in good condition, will bring a good amount of money because this coin is a DDO or double die obverse coin, which you can see ever so slightly in the dates in Liberty. This coin was able to sell for $99 even though it was environmentally damaged, four in Miss 66 and higher. This 1946 S. Washington quarter is close to being in Miss 68 condition. These alluringly smooth 46 S. quarter don't disclose even one insignificant attraction. However, there is a strong frosty shine as well as lovely toning in the colors of crimson, rust, orange, gold, and silver rose. Stunningly beautiful. $14,950 was paid for it. A very bright shine covers both sides of this superb operant gem in number three, a 1970s Lincoln sand coin with a double die obverse and a notable modern mistake sand. The original light orange has the best effect on skin tone. A minty hue the eliminated brilliantly was struck and free of noticeable flaws, leaving the doubling that clearly defines onto all worst. This 1910 Lincoln scent wizard pierced mint mark is Legends 2. S stands for the Summit San Francisco branch. PCGGs read a greater than mean state of 67. A flawless specimen of this uncommon species has striking olive gold color on both sides. The fields are covered in a thick mud-like sheen that contrasts nicely with the more definite texture of the objects. The 1910 SFS 502 is a highly sought after variation that is incredibly sharp throughout and free of any kind of noticeable flaws. Are there underestimated types? that pales in comparison to other well-known variations like the 1958 and the 1969S. However, knowledgeable Lincoln collectors understand its genuine scarcity and its frequently the most specialist collections and jewels. It was sold for $19,000 and $200. Here's that coin we've been waiting for. This coin sold for $21,600, and here's why this is a 1944 D. That D mint mark stands for the Denver Mint, where this coin is produced one cent wheat penny graded by NGC at an AU detail. So this coin has been cleaned. Unfortunately, the majority of the time, you're not going to want to clean your coin unless it is done by a professional company like NGC. They have a professional restoration company called NCS, which professionally restores the coin's condition. The reason why it's so rare and valuable is because it was struck on a transitional zinc-coated steel planche. Once again, this coin has been cleaned. However, because it got the negative comment of cleaned, it is going to bring less money than it would have otherwise. This coin sold for $21,600. If you want to know how much your coin is worth, Join the Coin Value Club down below today, and we'll see you inside. In this video, I'll discuss 1975 Philadelphia Mint Jefferson Nichols and reveal the values of these coins. Thus, in excellent, immaculate condition. As can be seen, Sheldon Ski has this Jefferson Nichols encircled in exceptional shape. Since there is no mint mock beneath the date, Philadelphia Mint produced it. The Denver branch of certain beef has impressed those with D mint mock. 
Surfaces of cold nickel gray are mildly abraded, although they still retain some nickel gray mint shine in certain places. Make sure to click the subscribe and build buttons located below the reverse side display sharp strike, but not sharp enough to acquire full steps classification if you haven't already done so. If the graded one cello steps are completely flat on a few steps lower, I appeal is generally good. Therefore, the 1975 Jefferson Nichols is not regarded as valuable or scarred. In actuality, it is a very typical coin that has been produced in vast quantities since the 1975. The Jefferson Nichols coin does not have any scars, and its worth is mostly determined by how well it has been used in circulation, where it exhibits indicators that its value has typically been around or around its five-cent face value. The 1975 might, however, have a marginally higher worth to collectors if you find it in commerce and it is still in excellent condition. The 1975 nickels only have some value in higher mean states with full river steps. Take this scent as an illustration by PCGs greater than the typical state 67 plus. One of the finest full steps 1975 nickels known to PCGs, it is exquisitely toned in pastel iridescent hues. The surfaces have been expertly kept and have been entirely struck. At Stax Powers, sold in 2021 for $45,160. Discover the hidden treasures within the world of coin collecting, where history and value converge. Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the 1950 nickel. Its scarcity and unique mint varieties make it a true gem for collectors of all ages located anywhere in the world. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just beginning your numismatic adventure, this fascinating piece of history holds something for everyone. By understanding the importance of variety and condition, you can unlock the true worth of your very own 1950 nickel. So join us in exploring the world of vintage nickels and immerse yourself in the captivating realm of coin collecting. Your 1950 nickel is an elusive find. It is a favorite year with collectors and an exciting addition to their collections. With a built-in allure because of the date, the next and important step is recognizing the quality of your coin. Values rise on a scale along with the state of preservation. Subtle points are judged and grade is determined in step two. Compare your coin to the grading images to narrow its range on the value chart. Popular variety of 1950, Jefferson Nickel. To recognize 1950, is one of the very interesting dates in the entire Jefferson Nickel series. It has intrigued collectors for decades. Soon after release of the 1950s Nickels, it was realized by collectors as a low production year for coinage. San Francisco did not strike any Nickels alerting collectors to watch numbers struck from Philadelphia and Denver. As it turned out, both mints struck below average numbers for the year. Correctly identify your 1950 Nickel variety. Both are needed, complete a set of vintage Nickels. 1950D Jefferson Nickel D Mint Mark on reverse, Denver Mint struck the coin. A 1950 Denver Nickel has the distinction of the lowest mintage of the entire Jefferson Nickel series. 2,630,030 Nickels released to circulation is a very low number of coins and collectors highly prize the variety. These are also one of the few dates and mints of the series with a premium value in circulated condition. Denver placed a D mint mark on coinage to identify the mint. The small letter is on the reverse to the right of Monticello next to the rim. An important variety to identify, Philadelphia, the main mint normally struck tens to hundreds of millions of nickels per year. 1950 is an exception with numbers minted just over 9.8 million, turning out as the eight lowest of the Jefferson nickel series. Low numbers of coins struck is an indication to collectors of a potential scarce variety. Today, premiums have developed for examples in lightly circulated condition. In the 1950s, Philadelphia did not use a mint mark to identify it coinage. Look on the reverse of the coin. The absence of a mark in the area to the right of Monticello confirms the Philadelphia mint variety. 1950 nickels are a premium value coin in grades from mint state through the lower circulated grade of good. Grading qualifies the amount of wear when compared to standards. The different grades are listed on value charts to narrow how much the coin is worth. Hello everyone, it's fantastic to be back with another Roseworth Dimes episode.
the reverse side of these coins, which are 1977 Philadelphia examples with heavily braided dollar zero. 10 pieces shows the weekly strike date, making them nowhere near eligible for full bands categorization. Please use the subscribe and build buttons located below this video to join our channel if you haven't already. The 1977 Roseworth Time is a typical coin with a large mintage, just like the majority of Roseworth Times, since the United States Mint produced over 796 million dimes in 1977, they are comparatively common and simple to locate. The 1977 Roosevelt dime is regarded as the scarcest coin in terms of availability. It doesn't have any distinctive qualities that are particularly rare or that will have a big impact on its either worth or collectability. Specific variations or minting mistakes, however, might occasionally raise the value's popularity among collectors. 1977 Roosevelt dime circulation is often worse than their face worth of zero dollars. 10. Coins that are in uncirculated condition and still have their original brilliance may be worth a little more to collectors. However, the value is still somewhat low unless it is in outstanding condition or shows a unique variant or defect. Two specimens with no finer make up the service's 67 FB population. At the Great Collections Auction in April 2023, one of the most priceless specimens of the problem was negotiated. These well-toned specimens in at least 67% condition with full bands sell for $14,106 with buyer's premium. I appreciate you guys watching. Keep watching our videos on YouTube and don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons, rating both sides. It borders on numismatic perfection. All regions are free of grade-restricting flaws, and the central reverse still has a beautiful appearance. The current piece absolutely cannot be improved upon, having been flawlessly carried out and preserved with the utmost care and expertise. It brought in dollar $1,920 at auction 5. This 1962 Roosevelt dime has a star and FT designation from NGC and is in MS67 condition. Early 1960s dimes were widely hoarded by the BU roll and bag, according to NGC, but many of them were traded repeatedly between owners until they were valuable enough as singles to warrant grading and encapsulation. The outcome is, although there seems to be a greater than typical ratio of full torch examples for a Philadelphia dime, a Miss 67 may be a little difficult to locate. This hard-to-find specimen sold for $1,997.50 in the end.